Oh, she spit out her food. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Yeah. Why do you throw everything? Papa, you ain't about to do nothing. It's a hard day. <laughs> <laughs> she goes like this. <laughs> hey, Melody, could you throw me uh, your Gatorade? Because I'm thirsty. Right. Where's water? Uh, I don't know. This was like from two weeks ago. Well, I'm not going to throw it to you. I'll pass it down. Pass okay. Tasha, you can throw it. Take one. Pass it down. Well, yeah, I guess we got a dilemma, don't we? Give it here. <laughs> How's it Ryan? Bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? I can't see it, dear mother-in-law. I can't see it. I just see dear mother-in-law in this picture. I'll read it later. So, Sabbath peace, everybody. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. We know all honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In Him lies the only hope for salvation. It's obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, but given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe and that we are already condemned. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of pro prophecy, or any other supernatural experience, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints in the room and to the saints afar so off and the ones that are watching in. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All right? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 28 verse 9. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Let's just take this off. That's from here, too. It's going to be raining tomorrow. No, it ain't going to rain. It's pouring. No, it ain't going to be pouring right now. Nah. <laughs> whom shall he teach knowledge? So he said, To whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And who is he gonna make to understand teaching? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Uh huh. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line, here a little, and there a little. Right, so we think of that like a puzzle, right? He says precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, right? So we think of that like kind of putting the putting the puzzle together. All right, watch what he say next. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. All right, so he said he'll speak to this people with stammering lips and another tongue. So he's speaking to people in a way that's going to be difficult to understand, right? You have a person walk up to you and they say, <laughs> and they stuttering and they stammering. It's difficult. It's more difficult to understand them, right? If somebody comes speaking to you in a different language, it's more difficult to understand them, right? Let's see. To whom he said, this is the rest, wherewith he may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, uh -huh. yet they would not hear. Right? But they wouldn't hear. So the word of the Lord was unto them. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line, here a little, and there a little. For what reason? That they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Right, and what's a snare? It's a trap, right? So they broke it, they ended up being broken and snared and trapped. Right, and that's what we look at, right? When we look at it when we when we don't pay attention to the word, when we aren't focused, when we when we haven't focused our mind on getting through the tough parts, right? Getting through us not understanding in the in the trials and the tribulations that we may come across in life, then a lot of times we can lose our focus. And once we do that, it ends up being a trap for us. Right? It's just like what we were reading last week in Nehemiah, right? Nehemiah, excuse me, he had a work from the to do for the Lord, right? Remember he had building the wall, right? Putting the wall together. And then he had people that come to him. And they was like, Oh yeah, why don't you uh, excuse me? Why don't you uh, come take counsel with us, right? Let's just go meet in one of these villages. Let's just talk. But Nehemiah was like, man, I can't come down there. I got a great work. He had to stay focused, right, to get finished, the, to complete the work of the Most High God. 
Right? He even had somebody from his own country, one of our brother. Right? He came up to him. He said, hey, well, why don't we, since they're going to try to get you, they're going to try to kill you in your sleep, let's run to the temple. They won't get us there. He's like, now, do I look like a person that should flee? Right? Do I look like a person that should be running from these people? He said, no, nah, that's all right. You know what I'm saying? And he said, also said, I perceive that this man, he wasn't from the Lord. Right? He is a false prophet. Right? Just come saying some stuff. He said, I'm not running to the temple. So we saw through Nehemiah that he stayed focused, right? That same type of focus was with Yahushua. Remember, Yahushua walking and people would ask him to do things and tell him what to do or, or tell him he always refocused people on his mission. He said, I have to be, I have to make it to Jerusalem. He said, no prophet dies outside of Jerusalem, right? He said, I have to go and the Son of Man has to be lifted, right? So he was always focused on what the goal was. And that's the same attitude that we have to have. We have to always be focused we can't be distracted by a lot of the things that, that uh, try to distract us, right? And we learned that from Nehemiah, right? Let's continue on where we left off. It's Nehemiah chapter uh, 7. I think we left off at about 6, so let's go ahead and pick up. It's Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 1. Is Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 1. Now it came to pass when the wall was built. Uh huh. So this is after they built the wall, right? So it said it came, it came to pass after the wall was built. And I had set up the doors and the porters and the singers and the Levites were appointed that I gave my brother Hanani and Hananiah, the ruler of the palace, charge over Jerusalem. For he was a faithful man and feared God above many. And I said unto them, let not the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun be hot. Right? He said, don't don't open up the gate until it's bright day. Right? He said, until the sun get hot, till you can start feeling the sun. All right? Leave it closed. Right? Oh, go ahead. And while they stand by, let them shut the doors and bar them. Uh-huh. And appoint watchers, watches of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, everyone in his watch, and everyone to be over against his house. Mm -hmm. Now the city was large and great, but the people were few therein, and the houses were not built. Mm -hmm. And my God put it into my heart to gather together the nobles and the rulers and the people, uh -huh. that they might be reckoned by genealogy. And I found a register of the genealogy of them which came up at the first and found written therein. Right? So what he just told us is, you remember, who came up at the first? Who came, who came back to Jerusalem first? Who are we reading about? Right? So we got cast out with Zedekiah. We're in Babylon 70 years. But who, who was amongst the first to start coming back? Who? They were worried about being attacked on the way back, right? Yeah, who are we, who are we reading about? Jeremiah. No. Nehemiah. We're reading about Nehemiah right now. Who else? Why don't I know? Before that. What about Ezra? Ezra. Oh, right? Yeah. Right, so Ezra, remember Ezra, he was he was amongst the first to come back. You remember when we were reading in the book of Ezra, even before Ezra, Ezra didn't start coming back until about Ezra 7, right? Before that, though, we were reading about who else? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you remember we were reading about, uh, we were reading about, uh, um, now I'm drawing uh, Dan, a blank. No, Esther. Dan, no, not Esther. Uh, Ezra. Esther's husband. Art, Artaxerxes. No. He's not a Jew, so he wouldn't have been coming back. Okay. But that is the king over all of Persia, right? Right. But uh, we also we also had Zerubbabel, right? right? Zerubbabel. And we also had uh, Yeshua or Yahushua, Yeshua. Joshua. Oh, right? Yeshua. Or Joshua, okay. right? So you had Joshua and you had Zerubbabel, right? They were amongst the first to go back. You remember they started to set up the the foundation of the temple, right? And then they built up the temple, right? And after they built the temple, then Ezra came. Right? Then we are reading in Ezra about how Ezra was making a prayer. And he taught the law. Huh? And he taught the law. And he taught the law. Let's read about that as a matter of fact. Let's go to... Uh, so right now it's going to give us the genealogies of all the people, right? So we're going to skip on past that and we're going to jump over into chapter 8. This is Nehemiah chapter 8. Hey. Hush. And sit down. Hmm? Sorry, she You probably do. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street. They gathered themselves together as what? As one man into what the are, street. What are we when we together? One man. 
Yahushua. What man is that? Yahushua. That's Yahushua. We the body of who? Christ. That's right, right? The body of the Messiah. Right? We know Christ is the same thing as Messiah, right? Christ will be a Greek version. Right? Christ Christ comes from, from the word Christos. Right? The Greek word Christos. And that just means to anoint. Right? Messiah comes from the Hebrew word Mashiach or Messiah. Right? And that just means also to anoint. Right? Anoint just means to pour, or to, to spear, uh, smear, or, uh, you know, really it's just to pour. So, so. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> go ahead and uh, go ahead and keep reading. That was before the water gate, and they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses. They spoke unto who? Ezra. Ezra, right? So this is the same Ezra we were reading about before. Right? So this is in the book of Nehemiah. They call it on when they start getting everything together. They spoke, yeah. they call Ezra, right? They call Ezra the scribe. They call Ezra the scribe, and what they're trying to get him to do is open up the book of the law. Right? They had to hear the law. Watch how the people. Watch how the people reacted to the law. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, uh -huh. and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. Mm -hmm. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday, before the men and women and those that could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. Uh huh. And as with the scribe. So hold on. He said the ears of all the people were what? The ears of all the people were. Huh? Attentive. All right. He said the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. All right. That just means they are paying attention. All right. That puts them in a the place where they are paying attention. And notice what he said there. So you notice, you know, they said that they are paying attention. And notice what he said before that. Right, read uh give me about verse like six. Before? Yeah. What verse was that? We on verse three. Oh, verse three? Yeah. Uh, give me uh verse two then. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. Uh-huh. So he said all they can hear with understanding. Right? It's important, right? Watch what he said. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday before the men and the women and those that could understand and the ears of the people were attentive unto the book of the law. Uh huh. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood which they made, which they had made for the purpose. And beside him stood Madaniah, Mattathiah, and Shema, and Ananiah, uh -huh. and Uriah, and Hilkiah, and, Mata, and Messiah, Messiah. Uh -huh. On his right hand, and on his left hand, Pediah and Mishael uh -huh. and Melchiah and Hashem and Hashbana and Hashbanda, Hashbadana, Zechariah and Meshulam. All right, so these are all the people that were standing with him. Right, he opened up the book of the law and he was he was reading it to the people and teaching it to the people. Anybody who can understand, and all the people were standing there and they were attentive. They were paying attention. Right, they were focused because they had they had a leader in Nehemiah that taught him that taught them how to be focused on the cause of God. Right, so they were focused and paying attention. Then he had on the right side a bunch of men, on the left side a bunch of men. Right, and all these men. Let's see what these men did. And and Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. Uh huh. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Uh huh. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. All right? So they bowed their heads and they, they worshipped the Lord with their faces. So this is, what well, I mean, what would we call this today? Church. It's praise and worship. Right? But let me, let, let's read it again. Let's see if it came from any music being played. Let's see if the choir, any praise dancers. Let's see what we had happening here. Hush your mouth. Read that verse again. What was it? Verse 6. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen. Right, amen. so he, he blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen. And then what? With lifting up their hands, uh -huh. and they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. What verse is that? Six. Give me five. 
And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. So right. He was above all the people. So this is the first thing he did. He opened up the book in the sight of all the people because he, he was above them. Right. So not above them as in, in, in who he is, but above them as in position. Right. He was standing above all the people and he is speaking to them. Right. Right. So he opened up the book in front of all the people. And then what happened? And when he opened it, all the people stood up. All right. Then all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and uh -huh. all the people answered, Amen, uh -huh. Amen. We lifted up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. All right? So the word is what caused these people to praise and worship. All right? The word is what caused these people to start getting on their knees and blessing God. All right? That has to be the same attitude that we have. Unfortunately, it's not a lot of times that we think of praise and worship as being something that comes from music or comes from from singing or come from uh, from dancing and all that other stuff. But that's not true, right? That's not where the praise and worship should come from. The praise and worship should come from the word, right? That should cause us to praise God, right? And worship God. Yeah. Also, Jeshua and Benai and Sherebiah, Jamin, Akka, Shabbatai, Hodiah, Messiah, Kilia, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, Peliah, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law. Right, so these are all the people and the Levites. They caused all the people to do what? To understand the law. To understand the law. So you notice, he said everybody who could have understanding, right? And then he made sure that we, he pointed out to us that they were all attentive. And then after that, he named all the people that was by his side and told us that they went around to the people to try to help them understand the law, right? They went to teach them the law. Right? And that's the same mentality that we have to have today. The same thing that we look at. We want to be taught the book. Right? We want to be taught the gospel. We want to make sure that we understand it. That we get an understanding. And that we have people who are capable to teach it to us. Right? Or that we look to the word to teach us by the spirit of the most high God. Right? Otherwise, we put ourselves in a position of not understanding. And what does the book say about a person that don't understand? Huh? That they didn't hear. How about uh, let's go to Romans Romans one. Is this something that? Oh. Sorry. Let's go to Romans chapter one. Chapter one. Yeah. Hey, is it ten or one? One. Oh. Romans one. That was funny when you said one and I said one. At the same time. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Jump on down to like towards, what's the last verse? It should be like right near the end. 32. Alright, give me like 29. Yeah. It's Romans chapter 1, verse 29. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness. What are all these things that he's naming? These are the things that defile you, right? We're going to go to that next. So the next thing we're going through is Matthew, uh, I'm sorry, Mark 7. Right? But right now, he said. Being filled with all what? With all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, malignity. Watch this. Whisperers, backbiters, uh -huh. haters of God. Haters of God. Despiteful, proud boasters. Right? De despiteful, proud boasters. Watch this. Inventors of evil things. Uh huh. Disobedient to parents. Uh huh. Without understanding. Uh oh. What did he say? Without understanding. He said, without understanding. Disobedient to parents, right? Without understanding. And then what else? Uh, covenant breakers. And covenant breakers. Without natural affection. Without a natural affection. Implicable. Uh huh. Unmerciful. Uh huh. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Right? So the people who commit the things that he just named are worthy of death. So amongst the things that he named was without understanding. Right? He said people without understanding. That was amongst the things that caused a person to be worthy of death. Hush your mouth. 
You're going to get one a lot worse than that, boy. Look at me. You better be quiet. Right? But he said, he said these are the things that are worthy of death. And one of them was being without understanding. Right? Let's go ahead and go to Mark 7. Right? Because we can say that. People would be like, no, that's not what he's talking about. He's saying people who do those things are without an understanding. He's not necessarily saying you worthy of death if you don't understand something. Right? I serve, I mean, I serve a gracious God. You never know. God, God, is, God will make you not understand something just so we can teach you. Right? And they come up with some type of myth. Let's look at it. All right. So this is Mark chapter seven. We just saw it. he said people without understanding are worthy of death. He named without understanding of a lot of the other qualities that are worthy of death. Let's see if it lined up with what we read in Mark. This is Mark chapter seven, verse 20. It's Mark chapter seven, verse 20. And he said that which cometh out of the man that defileth the man. All right. So we're talking about what defiles a man. He said the things that come out of you are the things that defile you. Let's see. From within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. Adulteries. Adulteries. Fornications. Fornication. He thinks sound the same so far. Let's see. Murders. Murders. Thefts. Mm -hmm. Covetousness. Mm -hmm. Wickedness. Mm -hmm. Deceit. Uh -huh. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. An evil eye. An evil eye. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Pride. Pride. What's, let's see what's next. Foolishness. Foolishness. Uh oh. Would you say that might be like without understanding? All right, he said foolishness, and what else? All these evil things come from within and uh -huh. defile the man. He said all these evil things come from within, and they are what defiles a man. All right, all right. Foolishness is having not not having understanding. Right, when you don't have understanding, then you don't have. I mean, you have foolishness. All right, that's what we look at, and he's saying these things are worthy of death. All right, and that's why when we when we were reading in Nehemiah. And they are trying to make the people understand. That's why it was important. Because if the people didn't understand, they would be worthy of death. Right? There's no, there's nothing to protect you for you to keep yourself in the way of the Most High God if you don't understand how to be there. So that's why we come here and we seek and we learn and try to try to figure these things out. Right? The Proverbs tell us many times. Right? Let's go to uh, Proverbs uh, 18. Proverbs 18.1. You were thinking that one already? Oh, I forgot to tell you something. Else. What? Right. Move away. take it. <laughs> That's right, right? We don't need no picture of Jesus. Right? He was upset because I was throwing out all his books and all the little fake Jesus to welcome in the children and stuff. That made you a little upset? Yes. That's all right. You, you'll be better off for it. You don't need a picture. Yeah. We'll get some that don't have pictures. This is uh, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1. Get back, boy. Go somewhere and sit down. Through desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermediateth with all wisdom. All right, so read that again, whatever. Through desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermediateth with all wisdom. All right, so he said, through desire, a man who separated himself. All right? He said, and that's important. So go ahead, go ahead and keep reading. So he said, so remember what he said, separated himself. Watch this. Keep going. A fool hath no delight in understanding. He said a fool, right? So now we're trying to understand what a fool is. So he said a fool has no delight in what? In understanding. So that means he's without understanding, right? A fool is without understanding. We're going to keep finish it out. But that his heart may discover itself. All right, so now let's deal with this separate. So, so let's read that first verse one more time so we can get an understanding. We're going to try to deal with that. Through desire. Through desire. A man having separated himself. So through desire, a man who has separated himself. Seek it and intermeddle it with all wisdom. Right? That's the one that's looking for wisdom. Right? Part of looking for wisdom is separating yourself. So watch when we that's watch what Peter tells us in first Peter chapter four. 
holy? Yes. Holy is to be separate or set apart. So he said, through desire, man has to be has to have a desire for wisdom, and in that he's going to separate himself. All right. This is First Peter chapter four, verse one. might just shoot through this tonight. Let's see. For as much then as Christ Christ has suffered for us in the flesh. So as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh. Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Uh-huh. So that means we got to have the same mind as him. Right? And that's the focus that we look for. It's his first. Right? So we have to have the same focus that he had. Right? For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. Mm -hmm. So if you suffered in the flesh, that means you've stopped sin. Cease is, we all agree, cease means stop, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he has ceased from sin. So Christianese, when we look at it from the Christian view, what this is really saying, it's not saying that you stop sinning. Zahar, cut it out. Hush. So a Christian would look at this and they look at season. It's like it don't mean that you completely stop sinning. It just means that you stopped a particular sin for a certain period of time, right? But let's let Peter talk for himself. Let's see. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Right? So that sounds pretty definite. He said no longer live the rest of his life, right? Like there ain't nobody without sin. If you say you without sin... Then you calling God a liar. No, I said I didn't say I never sinned. I said that I'd no longer live the rest of my life, right? After the, the lust of men. He didn't say a lust of men. He said the lusts of men, right? But instead, after the will of God, right? Keep going. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. Right? So he said in the time past... Man, it was cool for us to, uh, to do the work of the Gentiles, to do what the Gentiles did. He said, in time past, that was I for us. But watch what he say now. When we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Right? So these are all the things that we did when we ran along doing what the Gentiles wanted us to do. But watch what he said. Wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excessive riot, speaking evil of you. They think it what? Strange. They think it's strange that you do what? That you run not with them to the same excess of riot. Right? And evil of you. So they think it's strange that you don't run with them no more. So if you don't run with them no more, what does that mean? You separated. You're right? You separated. He said they think it's strange. You know, this is strange that he don't run with us no more to the same excess of riot. Excess just means extra. Right? Riot is just talking about doing stuff that's unsafe. Right? Stuff that's not appropriate. So you're just doing a whole bunch of extra stuff that ain't, that's inappropriate. Right? He said they, they think it's strange. And then after that, they speak with evil of you. Because you don't do the bad stuff anymore. Right? So now they're looking at you like, you self-righteous. You think you better than everybody. Right? I mean, you just don't love people. I mean, you just think, I mean, you just think by doing, by, by just because you keep a little bit of righteousness... You think that saved you and that everybody else condemned. You think you're the only one that's right. You think, all he think, all he think, instead of just looking at it like, well, you know what? What you're doing technically is not wrong. Let me figure out what's going on. Let's learn. Let me tell you what I think. Let's dialogue, whatever. It becomes a, a, an attack, right? Become, because, because now you they think it's strange. You used to run with me. Now you don't, right? So now this is strange. So now it becomes attack immediately, right? Oh, so you... Oh, so you just think you're better than me. No, I never said that. Right? Oh, so you think you know the word more than me now. Right? No, I never said that either. Right? But they think it's strange. So now they speak evil of you. All this stuff that we read in the Bible, it happens in everyday life. We look at it. Right? It's just a matter of being able to identify it and hopefully explain it to people to where they can identify it in themselves. 
Right? Let's see what else we got here. Who shall give an who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? Alright? But he said he's gonna he gonna judge the living and the dead. We know quick means living. Right? So he's gonna die, he's gonna judge the living and the dead. Right? Go ahead and let's go go back to Proverbs. Let's go back to Proverbs four actually. So this is uh Proverbs chapter four, verse one. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1. This is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1. So we can jump back on wisdom here. Alright, because Nehemiah, he called on Ezra, and then Ezra, he opened up the book, and then he called on, on, on uh, all the people that was with him, including the Levites. Then the Levites went around to make sure the people had an understanding, so we want to know how, how important that is. Alright? Alright, we want to know how important understanding is, how important what it means, what's the, what's the implication of not having understanding. Alright, what is wisdom? Right, and Proverbs is all about wisdom. Right, we read we read a couple weeks ago about wisdom. Right, and her children. Right, so uh, I think this touch on it a little bit more. It's Proverbs chapter one verse. Uh, I mean, Proverbs chapter four verse one. Hear ye children the instruction of a father, uh -huh. and attend to no understanding. Who wrote Proverbs? This part of Proverbs. David. No, though. No. Oh, because you were close, like, huh? No. Like, David was close, but... Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, who wrote Proverbs? King Solomon. Solomon, David's son, right? So you remember King David, the one who, who uh, David and Goliath, the one who slung the rock, right? He, he, he had a son, and his name was, he had many sons, but one of his sons' name was Solomon, and he became king. That's when we built the temple, right? Yeah, yeah. Saul, and then Saul got removed from by David, and David had a son who took over named Solomon, right? And Solomon built the temple, all right? So this is some one of Solomon's writing when he was in his heyday, all right? Let's see what he's talking about. For I give you good doctrine, forsake you not my law. Uh huh. For I was my father's son. He said. He said I was my father's son. So who, who was he talking about? David, right? Let's see. Tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Uh -huh. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. He said, He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. So if your heart retains words, what does that mean? Huh? And if you, you understand it. Basically, David was telling him. Understand what I'm telling you. He said, let your heart retain my words. Right? Keep going. Keep my commandments and live. He said, keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. All right? He said, get wisdom. Get understanding. All right? And neither decline from the words of my mouth. All right? So now let's 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 see what he is talking about. Because you remember, he just told him to keep my commandments. Right? So that's David technically saying, keep my commandments. Is David's commandments the same as God? So let's see what David actually commanded. We're gonna we're gonna hold what we got right here. Let's go to uh, uh, First Chronicles uh, twenty eight. It's First Chronicles twenty eight, verse six. It's First Chronicles chapter twenty-eight, verse six. Oh, yeah. 
child support too. I thought she was gonna bite me or something. I was like, really? Where's your Where's your Here, that's the one. Twenty what? Verse six. Uh, this is uh, First Chronicles chapter twenty-eight, verse six. For Pekah, the son of Remaliah, slew in Judah a hundred and twenty thousand in one day. No. Where you at? Oh, I'm gonna say it. Sorry. I'll do that all the time. I'd say we're a little further down in history with that. It's First Chronicles, chapter twenty-eight, verse six. And he said unto me, Solomon, thy son, he shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. All right. So this is David talking about how the Most High God was speaking to him. He said, the Most High God told me, Solomon, my son, is going to build the stuff. Right. Keep going. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever. If he, if he be constant to do my commandments and my judgment as at this day. All right. So he, then the Most High God told David, if your son do my commandments and my judgment as at this day, then I'll establish his kingdom forever. Now watch what David tells Solomon now. Now therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord, and in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God that ye may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. Right? So the Most High God told David, tell your son, if he do what I tell him to do, then he'll be all right. So then David came and he told his son, listen, do what the Most High God tell you to do and you can have this land as a possession, right? For all your inheritance. Right? So then Solomon, back to uh, Proverbs chapter 4, right? Let's turn on back. He said, Solomon, he was writing in Proverbs, and he told us, he said, he's been speaking to his son, right? He's saying, keep my commandments of like I'm a father, right? Just like my dad told me, right? And I keep his commandments, right? Because his commandment was to keep the father's commandments. Put it out. Come here. <laughs> 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 almost freaked out. Her first whooping came from Shanice. <laughs> My goodness. Nah, you gotta get <laughs> this is uh, Proverbs chapter 4. Give me about verse 4. <laughs> Now we left off. And five. It's Proverbs chapter four, verse five. Give wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Uh -huh. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Uh -huh. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. All right, so he said, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Watch what he say next. And with all thy and with all thy getting, get understanding. He said, with everything that you get, make sure you get understanding. Right? And everything that you get, make sure you get understanding. Right? Because without understanding, you are worthy of death. Right? right that's what we look at. Right? It's important for us to make sure we understand the things that, that we're getting. Right? That the Most High God is providing us. All right, go ahead and uh, jump over into uh, uh, Romans chapter 15. Right? There's a reason that we look into these things. There's a reason why we read about Nehemiah, why why it's important for us when we're reading in, in Psalm. When you're reading in uh, Proverbs and they get to talking about father and son, it means nothing to you if you don't know the history. Right? But it's important for us, you know, we take that time, we jump back into Chronicles and we see what actually happened. Like, what is this conversation talking about? Right? Because then we understand it, right? It gives us understanding. And everything that we get, we're supposed to get understanding. That's important. All right? Romans what? This is Romans 15, verse 1. Why right, we read through all this history. So some of this should be a refresher. 
when then that when we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, yep. and not to please ourselves. Mm -hmm. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. Right. So he said we we should bear the infirmities of the weak, and not to please ourselves. Like let every one of us uh, bear the infirmities of the weak. Right. To try to please them. All right. Keep going. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. All right? He said he didn't even please himself. That has to be the same focus, the same attitude that we have. All right? Most high God give us enough money to get a big house, and we make sure we got a Bible study room in it. All right? We can get money to, to blow it on a, 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 a Corvette and... And the two seater or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But no, you get a van to fit the family in, it, even though I only got one kid, right? But I want to fit the family in it. Right? That's the type of attitude that we have to have, right? We have to have the attitude that we're not thinking about pleasing ourselves, but rather thinking about pleasing the people that are around us, right? The people that seek the Most High God. I tell you it all the time. We have it hard enough out here just by ourselves, right? So our mind should be, well, if we know my brother is seeking God, if I know my sister is seeking God. What can I do to make it easier on her? Right? It's going to be struggles. It's gonna, things, there's some things we can't prevent. But what can we do to make it just a little bit easier on one another? How can we help each other out and do it? And sometimes we need to voice to each other, hey, this is what I need. Right? I need, I need this from you, even if it's just simple stuff like phone calls and all this stuff that I definitely don't want to do. But whatever. Right? Sometimes we need those things and we need to speak it to one another. Right? It's important because it's important for us to bear the infirmities of each other. It's important for us to be here for one another, to help support one another, because that's what the Most High God did for us through His Son. All right, keep going. I ain't care. I don't care nothing about these sinners. You know what I'm saying? They come later. You can do nice stuff for sinners too, but the faith of the family of faith, and I don't just mean the people in this room. I'm talking about anybody who's walking and seeking after God. Right? If they're not against us, then they're for us. If they're not for us, then they're against us. Right? And then what that means is if we don't see anything or haven't heard anything or they haven't done anything to show themselves against the word of God, then we have no reason to assume that they're not. Right? We have no reason to assume that this person, everything that they showed us that is, is, is okay and they haven't done nothing wrong, then we shouldn't be assuming and, oh, well, I'm not, I'm not helping that person because he's a sinner. That makes no sense. If you know somebody a sinner, that's fine. Right? No book against it. No book against it. I know this person is a sinner. I'm not helping them be a sinner. Period. No, no book against it. But if we don't know a person, we can't just assume they're probably a sinner, so I'm not going to help them. We can say they're probably a sinner. We can say all that stuff. But if we act like it, then that's wrong. Right? We messed up. Right? Our heart has to be a heart to not just help the people in this room, but to help anybody who's seeking after the Most High God. Right? Until they show us something different. Right? And that's what we have to, our mind has to be on that. We have to seek to please one another as opposed to just pleasing ourselves. Right? Keep going. For whatsoever things were written before time were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Right? So he said everything that's written before it was written for our learning. Right? So the things that was written about David the things that are written about Solomon the things that were written about Nehemiah. Right? All those things were written for our learning. That we can learn from David. We can learn a good example and learn about his mistakes and learn not to make those mistakes. Right? Nehemiah, we can learn about his focus. Right? And we can learn about how to, he, Nehemiah may have, may have made some mistakes too. And we can learn about not how to make those mistakes. Right? And Solomon, oh, Solomon made some mistakes. Right? Solomon is the reason why Nehemiah is in the position that he's in. Right? Let's go, let's go to Nehemiah chapter 13. Let's see if we can learn from some things that were written before time. This is Nehemiah chapter 13. Watch what he said. 13 verse 1. Nehemiah chapter 13 verse 1 On that day they read in the book of Moses in the audience of the people and therein was found written that the Amorite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of God forever. Uh-huh. 
because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water, but hired Balaam against them, mm -hmm. that he should curse them. Howbeit our God turned the curse into a blessing. Now it came to pass when they had heard the law that they separated from Israel all the mixed multitude. Mm -hmm. And before this, Eliashib, the priest, having the oversight of the chamber of the house of our God, was allied unto Tobiah. And he had prepared for him a great chamber where aforetime they laid the meat offerings, the frankincense and the vessels and the tithes of the corn, the new wine and the oil, which was commanded to be given to the Levites, and the singers and the porters and the offerings of the priests. But all this time was not I at Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. For in the two and thirteenth year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon, came I unto the king, and after certain days obtained I leave of the king. And I came to Jerusalem and understood of the evil that Eliashib did for Tobiah. He came to Jerusalem and did what? Understood. understood. He understood. Right? Even if you go back up to verse 3, watch this. Go back to uh, verse 3. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 3. Now it came to pass when they had heard the law that they They did what? They had heard the law. They had separated from Israel all the mixed multitudes. So when they heard the law, there was a response. Right? When they heard the law... There was something that changed, right? Because they understood it, right? When you understand the word, it produces a change in you. That's what the word does to it. It plants a seed and then something grows, right? What do y'all think the, the Matthew, the, um, the parable was talking about? Hold we got. We're going to come back to the Nehemiah 13. Let's go to uh, Matthew 13. It's Matthew. Matthew, we should have started off with this. It's Matthew chapter 13, verse... Uh, 23. That's too long. Go to verse maybe 16. It's Matthew chapter 13, verse 16. Verse 17. Verse 16. It's Matthew chapter 13, verse 16. We'll see what we got. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Yeah, we can start there. I think that's a little before what I want, though. 19? What does 19 say? When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not. Yeah, there we go. That's exactly what I want. This is Matthew chapter 13, verse 19. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth, catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. Mm -hmm. This is he which received seed by the way of side. By right? the wayside. So this is somebody who didn't understand the word. Right? Just like a seed. Being being planted on the on the sidewalk and then a a, a bird coming away and snatching the, the seed up, right? Because they didn't have an understanding. Watch this. Excuse me. But he that receiveth the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receive it. Mm -hmm. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word. By and by, he is offended. All right? So, you hear the word, and then, I mean, with great joy, you just get excited. Like, oh, man, for real? I'm a Hebrew? Right? Oh, man, for real? God? That's God? He really does that? Right? God really did that for us? He really let that miracle happen? That's nice. Get all excited. But he said, you didn't have no root. If you don't have no root, what does that mean? Root. Oh, you right. You right. Oh, like whenever they threw the seeds and the, it didn't go all the way down, you could pull them out easy? You could pull them out easy. It ain't no root. So it said when persecution came, when people came, and, and you know, like how they did Nehemiah, come on down, give us some counsel. Or like the other guy was like, you know what? Let's run to the temple. They're going to try to kill you. Right? When that type of stuff come, you're going to fall. Right? Because you don't have any root. The word didn't take root, which means you didn't understand it well enough. Right? You love the word, though. I mean, you got it, and you got excited about it. I mean, you was, you was right with it. Like, man, yeah, I'm a Christian. Right? Yeah, let's do this. Right? I'm a Hebrew Israelite. Right? Let's do this. Right? I'm a disciple, even. Yeah, let's do this. And you thought you were down for it, then all of a sudden, people start calling you out your name, talking evil of you. They saying, no, nah, they don't think you believe in the right thing, telling you that you're in a cult, all that stuff. Then you just start doubting. you just like, well, I don't know. Well, I don't know. He said, when that persecution come, you read it again. What happened that persecution come? Yet he had not rooted himself, but during for a while, for when tri tribulation or persecution ariseth, 
because of the word, by and by he is offended. All right? So it ain't no tribulation persecution because you got a parking ticket. Ain't no tribulation per per persecution because you owe somebody money. He said tribulation and persecution because of the word. When people start criticizing what you believe, he said you couldn't take it. Right? You couldn't take it. You endure, you endure for a while, but I mean, you just couldn't take it. Watch what happened next. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. I mean, you're just a little bit more too, too, too material. You know what I'm saying? It's like just certain things in the word. I mean, I mean, it's just like I need to have certain things. Or I just need to have certain things. And it's too tough for me to like get these things and be honest. So if the word requires me to be honest, I'm just, I mean, maybe God ain't tripping about this. I'll just lie on my taxes this time. Right? I mean, it's not, I mean, not a big deal. I mean, you know what I'm saying? God ain't really tripping on that. He said the carols of the world, nah, I mess you up. That they mess you up, right? Let's see what else he got. Well, he that receiveth seed into the good ground. Is he, he said he that, he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word. And what else? And understandeth it, which and he, also beareth fruit. He understands it. And because of that, it produces something. It bears fruit. Right? So that's why in Nehemiah chapter 3, I mean chapter 13, that they heard the law and then they began to respond. They started to separate themselves from the mixed multitude. Right? Keep going in Matthew. Okay. Another parable put he forth to do. I shouldn't have been in or what? Mm -hmm. uh, and understandeth it, which also bears fruit and bringeth forth some a uh, hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Right. So you see, we can produce at different levels when we understand. Right. Some of us uh, produce a hundred, some sixty, and some thirty. Right. But we'll produce at different levels. The most important thing is that we actually understand the word, right? That we get the word and that it takes root in us and that we, we begin to, uh, to put ourselves in the position to actually respond to what's good, right? To respond to the good of the word, right? Go ahead and go to Nehemiah chapter 13. We're going to swing back. I think we is at verse 3. We're just going to read it one more time and we're going to jump on down. It's uh, Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 3. Now it came to pass when they heard the law that they separated from Israel all that makes multitude. And before this, Eliashib, the priest, having the oversight of the chamber of the house of our God. Jump on down to 23. This is Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 23. Alright? Because the reason why we came here, we wanted to understand about the things that, are, that were written the four times and how we could learn from them. Alright? Let's see if Nehemiah learned from them. In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab. Right? So where did we where did we first hear about this at? Ammon? People marrying wives of Ashdod and Ammon and Moab. Oh, when uh Cain and no. Um who did he say if you marry them they're gonna turn you from your religion? Mm-hmm. Oh, He's a religion, but yeah. Oh, what's the name of uh, We talked about him today already. Yeah, I know what about Remember, he said a prayer. And he, yeah. he, you know, and then he mentioned the wall, and then that's how we ended up talking about Nehemiah. Maybe. when they uh, buried them uh, in Moses uh, when they was made all them women. Like, nah, who did we talk about? No, Ezra. We talked about Ezra. Right? Remember Ezra? We had read in the book of Ezra. Remember all the people had, had married strange wives. And then Ezra, remember, he pulled, he plucked out his hair. All right? And he sat in ashcloth and, uh, uh, sack sack and ashes. Right? And he was sick about it. So then he started making a prayer. And he was like, the most high God, you gave us all these walls. And we stopped at walls. We was like, whoa, we a little bit ahead of ourselves. Right? Because we was like, we didn't even learn about how the wall got built. So then we went to Nehemiah. Then we started learning throughout the weeks about how Nehemiah actually built the wall. Now we come in full circle because Nehemiah is talking about that same event that Ezra was praying about. So he had learned that these people had married the wives of these strange women. I mean, these strange nations, right? Are these Canaanites? Yeah, these are Canaanites, yeah. Oh, okay. Keep going. Yeah, the Canaanites is like uh, the Perizzites, the Hittites, the Hivites, and, uh, you know, the Amorites. The Amorites. Perizzites. Oh, <laughs> so they are all like they all used to live in Canaan, which is, which is Israel now. 
That was what we read. Okay. In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod and Ammon and of Moab. And their children spake half the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. All right, so he said they couldn't even speak our language. <laughs> Right, they lost our language. Right, and they spoke according to the, the to the language of each people. Watch what you say now. And I contended with them and cursed them. And this is uh this is Nehemiah chapter thirteen verse twenty five. And I contended with them and cursed them and smote certain of them and plucked off their hair and made them swear by God, saying, "Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons, or for yourselves." All right. So Nehemiah, you now he starts stealing on people, right? He said he smote some of them, right? Plucked out the hair and he made them swear, right, that you would not give your daughters or your sons to these people. All right. Keep going. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Uh oh, he said, didn't Solomon sin on these things? All right. Let's hear. It. Yet among many nations was there no king like him. He said there was nobody like Solomon. Who was beloved of his God. And God made him king over all Israel. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, even them did outlandish women cause to sin. Right? He was even God's man. He was God's man. Right? I mean, God made him king over everything. And the women still turned him from his God. Right? And caused him to sin. So he's looking at these people like, what do y'all think y'all going to do? Right? I mean, Solomon was God's man, the king over everything, had the thing in the bag, and these women pulled him away. So y'all think doing the same, breaking the same commandment that he broke, y'all think y'all going to be all right? Let's see. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil, to transgress against our God and marrying strange wives? And one of the sons of Joyada, the son of Eliashib, the high priest, was son-in-law to Sanballat and the Horonite. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I chased him from me. Mm -hmm. Remember them, O oh my God, because they have defiled the priesthood and the covenant of the priesthood and of the Levites. All right. He said, remember them. All right, because he said they, they messed it up. They defiled it. They made it unclean. They made it rejected. All right, by breaking the commandment. All right, that's what Nehemiah was looking to do. He was looking to try to clean the place back up. Nehemiah, his whole mind is thinking about this is how we got here because he learned from the things that were written the four times right so when he read about them marrying wives he's like y'all still doing this y'all do know this is how we got here y'all do know this started with solomon and it was all downhill from there right y'all do understand that this is why we got kicked out of the land because these people caused us to sin and we start worshiping all their gods and now y'all still doing it right so he start beating people up and chasing them out and trying to and trying to handle this thing with force to try to get people back in line the best he could, right? He said, "Remember me, O God." All right. Go to First Corinthians chapter nine. Let me try to wrap it up. All right, Solomon. Solomon was God's man, right? But what we can learn from that is no matter what, we have to keep ourselves, right? I don't care. He wrote a book in the Bible, Proverbs, right? Songs of Solomon, right? Ecclesiastes, right? All over the book, people mention them, right? But the end of his story is talking about him sinning, right? We don't show anywhere that he repented. Right? That's big. That's huge. Right? What we have to look at is what Paul is about to tell us right now. This is first uh first Corinthians chapter nine, verse twenty-four. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. Alright? They got a race going on this weekend. I think it's race race for life or something like that. Against abortion, I heard. Right? He said, everybody going to be running. He said, don't you know in a race, you got eight lanes, right? Every single one of these people running. How many win, though? One. You only have one winner, right? But all of them run. And then this is what he's trying to tell us now. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Right? So he said, run that you may obtain. Run that you may win. 
He said, everyone who strives in the mastery, in other words, everyone who, who's trying to master their craft, right, is what? Temperate. What is temperate? Uh, self-control. That means you're disciplined. You have self-control, right? So if I'm a boxer, right, I'm a boxer, I'm not going to just be swinging everywhere, not if I'm trying to win a fight, right, because I, I have mastery of what I'm doing. So I'm going to have self-control, right, I'm going to watch what I eat. Right, I'm a train every night. All right, these are the things I, I have to, when I'm when I'm boxing, I'm watching what the other person is doing. Right, I know to keep my fist tight right here to cover my face and snap it back when I punch. Right, I know that because if I don't, then when I when I if I don't do that, I don't have my guard up. Somebody can knock me out. I'm disciplined. Right, I know these are how you think Mayweather is. Right, you watch him fight. Right, he has a shoulder right here. Right, he's gonna put a shoulder right here because he knows that. I can block three things now, right? I can have my hands right here, block a punch coming this way. I can hide behind my shoulder, block a punch coming this way, right? And then I can also block with this hand, right? So now, this is my style, right? He's disciplined. He goes into every fight fighting that same way, right? He runs and ducks and dodges because he's disciplined, right? And that's why he hasn't lost a fight. He's saying the same way for us. Right, we have to be disciplined. Any basketball player, any football player that has success, they are disciplined. Right? He's saying the same way, react that way with the most high God. You have to have temperance, you have to have discipline. Right? Keep going. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. Right? The, what Mayweather do it? He do it to get a whole bunch of money, get a belt. All that stuff gonna wither away. He's gonna spend all that money or somebody gonna spend it even if it ain't him. Right? Kobe Bryant, that's the man there. But it don't matter. He make all them shots just for championships and rings. All that stuff going to wither away. Somebody else going to have it. All is going to go. Right? But we and incorruptible. But what we do it for is incorruptible. Right? What we do it for lasts forever. It's going to be something brand new. These people ain't never heard of. Right? He said even more so do it for this. Watch him. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight. Uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beat at the air. Right? He said, so when I run, I ain't running like I ain't sure if I'm a win or not. He said, I'm running like I know for sure. He said, when I fight, I'm not fighting like I'm just somebody beating the air. He said, when I fight, I know what I'm hitting. Right? Watch what he say next. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Right? He said, I bring my body into subjection. That's self-control. That means I control my body. For what reason, Paul? Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. He said, or else I mess around and be writing all this word for y'all. And I'll be preaching it to y'all. And I don't even make it in. Who do you think he learned from? Right? We saw Solomon. Solomon was given the word from David. Solomon wrote three of these books that we read in our Bible. God appeared to him in but a dream. God appeared to the man in the dream, told him that he was going to give him wisdom. Right? He was a prophet. Right? And in the end of his life, the last thing we read about this man in the Bible is that he was a sinner. Period. That's it. We don't hear nothing else. We hear that he had taken by, had a whole, had a thousand women. Right? He had taken by him. He started building altars to other gods for him. That's it. And he caused Israel to sin. Right? Paul's looking like, man, I know. I mess around. Preach this good word to all these people. And me, myself, I'll be cast. All these other people I preach to will mess around and be saved. But me, I'll be cast away. He said, no, nah, I got to keep myself under self-control. Right? That's to be for all of us. No matter how high or low we think we are on God's stolen pole. Our whole idea is to make sure that we discipline and we say we, we keep ourselves and make sure that we get an understanding of the things that's taught to us, the things that the Most High God chose to be revealed to us. Otherwise, we're doing it in vain. We're doing it for no reason. It's empty. All right? Any questions? I think that's pretty quick tonight. Any questions, though? All right, well, let's pray out.